Uh, it's nice to be here. Uh, so basically, my name is uh, Stani Kulechov. I'm the uh, founder at Aave. Uh, was first time here three years ago uh, in, in the uh, East London meetup. And pretty nice to see that the uh, community is very vibrant here and, and uh, a lot of people. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the Aave protocol. That's basically what we are doing uh, in, in our uh, blockchain startup and, and basically focusing on uh, money markets and kind of uh, we are trying to a bit of uh, improve the narrative that's in the DeFi space now and, and, and uh, I will show a bit of uh, different things that we are actually doing. So a uh, couple of things about me. So I'm actually from Finland. So uh, I got involved in the Ethereum back in 2016 and 2017. I was more heavily involved, uh, mainly because I was very fascinated about the technology and the idea that actually you can erase all the middlemen in between and make transactions that uh, basically act in a way that uh, is pre-programmed. So that was uh, very, very fascinating uh, for me back in the days. And I started to find people on Reddit and, and ask uh, uh, if, if anyone is interested in joining the, the project that I'm, I was doing. And I found a, uh, uh, well, it's, it's actually the very same startup, but uh, it previously was called Eatland. So what we actually did uh, back in the days, we, we created the uh, first smart contract based uh, lending protocol. Uh, which was more in form of peer-to-peer, -peer, kind of like an OTC, uh, connecting the lenders with the borrowers and uh, letting the smart contracts uh, do, the, do their thing, so basically secure the transactions. Uh, now we uh, rebranded uh, a year ago to Aave uh, and, and basically are trying to push similar lending concept but uh, in more uh, pooled manner, kind of improving what there is in DeFi today. And then we basically moved here into London, uh, and, and we, we do have an office in Switzerland, uh, but mainly uh, we're, we're pretty much here in the here in, uh, UK. And pretty much what we're doing is, is uh, called DeFi these days. I don't know how many of you guys have used uh, some sort of like a uh, decentralized finance application so far. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> That's good. I would say 50-50. So uh, I would tr try to be a bit of uh, gentle uh, <laughs> on the terminology and so forth. And because of that, I try to kind of go uh, a bit of the DeFi peculiarities and, and what we are doing at Aave and uh, how we are improving the, um, the, the current um, DeFi ecosystem with some uh, real, well, real, these are kind of like case examples, but uh, uh, examples of uh, different kinds of DeFi users interacting with, uh, with our protocol in, and what they find in DeFi and what, what basically uh, takes them into the space and, and try this uh, technology. And as a first example, we have uh, John, John the Stacker. So basically, uh, John wants to earn interest. So basically, by depositing funds into money markets. And what John is trying to aim uh, in, in, in basically by, by investing and, and by earning income is, is to invest something that's uh, low risk and, and basically highly liquid market. And in terms of money markets, uh, what's interesting there, uh, especially smart contract based money markets, uh, is that basically, uh, the risk level is somewhat, uh, I would say it low, but I know there are a lot of conservative people who say that because of the cryptographic assets are new, there's always a risk, but there's uh, the low riskness here is that there's a collateral in place and liquidation mechanisms uh, which allows you to close positions. And uh, because you can always uh, deposit money into money market and withdraw, uh, it's a highly liquid market. So. End of the day, what we are uh, talking here is basically a system where you can just deposit funds and on the other side, there are other users consuming uh, the, these particular funds. And this is basically the uh, experience that John has with, with the uh, DeFi. So he stumbles upon into decentralized finance. So his uh, previous experience might be more uh, using traditional uh, financial uh, instruments, uh, investments, uh, depositing into saving, ac saving accounts and, and earning some interest from there. 
Uh, and John reads an article about the Financial Times uh, a few weeks ago and decides that basically that might be an interesting uh, field to actually experiment and read about uh, the technology. And he saw, he's, he saw a tweet that our, our protocol is launching. That is basically what, what we are putting into the market now. And there's uh, this particular website that gathers all the information about what's, what is happening in DeFi, different kind of protocols, what they're doing, what kind of like financial uh, product is behind of that protocol, and how much people are putting funds. Let's see if I can make this laser to work. Was it? Uh, yeah. So this value here is, is pretty much, uh, I think it's a bit more higher these days because uh, the cryptographic assets has, has uh, gone up ways. Uh, but uh, this is the value that the current DeFi market holds. So in terms of uh, comparison, if you compare for, with the uh, traditional fi financial uh, markets and instruments, it's pretty small. So we're really talking about very small uh, field. But the interesting part here is that uh, there is a very big growth and interest in this space. And uh, yeah, so more or less, this is what drives uh, the curiosity. This is why many people come here now. Uh, now, the most interesting part for John is that uh, he realizes that in DeFi, anyone can access it. So there is this idea of, of smart contracts and decentralized finance that uh, you interact in a uh, kind of space that uh, there is nothing restricting you to do financial trans transactions. There is no utility bill that you actually submit and, and perform those transactions. And I, I know there's going to be a, a legal talk after me, so I hope these guys will not kill <laughs> what I'm saying now. But, but that's the kind of ideology. And the practice, of course, is a bit more challenging because of the novelty. But that's how uh, people who create these protocols and, and the communities that are, that are basically upholding are trying to achieve. And one of the most important things in uh, decentralized finance and, 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 and in, uh, in blockchain is that you don't give custody of your funds. So uh, when you interact with different lending protocols, uh, derivative protocols, and, and whatnot, uh, the idea is that you are actually holding your funds, and when you are interacting with different protocols, you actually know uh, what's, what, how, what and how the code will uh, do when you put their funds. And, and that's the kind of like key thing here. And to compare with traditional finance, you, you usually give your funds to someone and you trust that that person uh, really uh, upholds the contract and, and, and uh, basically does the uh, promise. And of course, uh, one of the most fascinating things for me personally is that the engagement is, is pretty much transparent. Uh, so if you look at the Ethereum uh, blockchain, it's pretty much pr public network. So you see all the transactions there. And what it actually brings uh, in DeFi space is also democracy. So you will see what others are doing and you can compare uh, what you are getting or what's offered to you or what are you using. Uh, basically, uh, you're always in an open world and that allows you to, to actually uh, get the best service out there. And of course, the very interesting part is that you can build products that uh, by using the smart, co smart contracts to avoid having this counterpart risk. And how we do in, in lending space, we usually use collaterals, uh, cryptographic collaterals. And because of this, uh, pretty much John decides that uh, he will go into DeFi space. And now he enters into the uh, Aave protocol. So pretty much what we are doing in Aave protocol, uh, we are using stable coins. So stable coins are an interesting way to transform uh, stable currency from one place to another and exchange it to actually spend it in real life. And I think uh, uh, Gustav and, and Maria will tell more about uh, especially DAI, which is the stable coin that we prefer. And when John deposits uh, the uh, stable coins, the 100 DAI into the uh, protocol, uh, he's uh, earning interest. So there's other people that are borrowing actually that liquidity. and 
what we do in our protocol, uh, especially, and, and what we do different that there is currently in the uh, uh, money market space is that we actually create uh, a balance of 100 ADI to the person that deposits. So imagine that uh, you're, go, you're going to a bank, you're depositing notes, and basically you're getting a uh, certificate of the deposit. And usually uh, the, the, the deposit certificate, in this case ADI, it practically holds the value that you have uh, deposited into the uh, protocol. And the difference here is that uh, anytime you earn interest, so uh, which is in our protocol pretty much uh, every second, that earned interest goes straight away to the uh, address of, of, of uh, John. Or, for example, he can redirect that interest to other places, which is convenient, for example, if there is uh, other recipients that wants, wants that particular interest. For example, if there's fund and, and there's uh, management fees that uh, needs to be sent other places or some accounting reasons. Uh, but the uh, interesting part, what's, what is out there that uh, the uh, interest-bearing interest tokens is not a uh, kind of like a novel, con I mean, it's a novel concept, but it's not completely new. Uh, but what's usually here is interesting is that usually you are using a exchange rate. So, so for example, uh, when you deposit DAI, you're getting an interest rate bear bearing token, uh, which basically gets more and more in value. And in this case, uh, basically, you will always have exact same amount of ADI that you deposit plus the interest. So kind of like we are trying to solve the accounting issue here and, and also uh, kind of like using a, a interesting way to uh, uh, earn in the uh, protocol. Uh, and what we are basically doing is we are stacking different kinds of A tokens. So in the previous example and in this example you have ADI and as you see so have is there anyone who has some sort of like uh, like Ethereum wallet, for example, MetaMask or, or any kind of like uh, Trust Wallet, Dab Browser or... Okay, cool, that's nice, that's nice. So when you do a deposit, what happens actually is that uh, you will see the, the deposited amount, which in this case is the 1,000 ADI. Sorry, DAI, and you get 1,000 ADI. And your balance will always go up inside of your, your actual wallet. So that's like a pretty neat way for you to understand like how much you're earning interest. And basically you can redirect that interest to any place uh, you want. And that's like the interesting part for us, like how we did it. It's a small thing. There's, there, there's a lot of small things in, in that actually you can improve. Uh, but the actual use cases are pretty interesting because you can build different kinds of applications on top of, on top of this particular interaction and, and uh, reuse it, for example. Uh, yeah, and then second example for us is, is basically uh, Laura. She is the uh, holder. So we are now looking at the other side of the, uh, the, the protocol because it's a money market, so there's always uh, suppliers and there's always consumers. Um, so Laura, in this case, is holding uh, ETH as, as basically she's long on ETH because she believes that ETH, uh, I mean, Ethereum 2.0 will be a uh, uh, pretty interesting update and, and she really wants to participate in that and the staking process in the future and governing that Ethereum uh, uh, protocol. And in this case, uh, she really doesn't want to actually sell that Ethereum when she wants to uh, to, to, well, if she has any expenses, for example, in, in real life. And what's interesting for her is that uh, she's also very, very careful shopper when it comes to interest rates. So uh, she really wants to commit to something that she actually is able to repay in the future, which pretty much makes sense. Uh, and following trends is pretty important. And the thing is in current DeFi space is that the interest rates are uh, going up and down all the time. So, so it's very difficult to control and, and plan your finances uh, if the uh, rates are going up and down in different time periods. And in this case, Laura Sauce sees from Bloomberg that Generation Zs are borrowing uh, against their ETH holdings. 
So in this case, uh, she doesn't want to sell the ETH when she needs the cash. And especially, and particularly, she doesn't want to give away the custody. And this is the very important part. So she particularly uses DeFi to get rid of uh, custody issues and, and all the kind of like nasty things that might happen in finance. And that's very kind of like the core of what we are doing in, in, in the DeFi space. So uh, one of the difficulties now is that as the interest rates are changing all the time, even when she's sleeping, uh, they can be, become very unbearable for her to pay. And she needs stability in her rates. And of course, flexibility that she can actually swap the rates if there's different kinds of trends. For example, if market goes up, she can actually uh, take a uh, uh, variable rate and, and kind of enjoy it. I'm sorry, if the market goes down, she can take the variable rate to, to kind of like uh, 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 take those lower rates. And if the rates are going down, if the, uh, sorry, up, if the trend is going up, she can actually uh, take a uh, stable rate so that she doesn't uh, suffer from the <coughs> upgoing rates. And then there is basically John, the uh, actual uh, stacker who deposited into the protocol, tells to Laura that uh, she's actually able to borrow with variable or stable rate. And that stable rate actually allows her to estimate how much she is paying interest in a uh, longer period of time. And if in case happens that the uh, rate, uh, that the trend extremely uh, increases, uh, she's balanced into a new rate. So we are not actually talking about a completely uh, fixed rate, but more about algorithmical uh, stable rate. And in the same way, if the uh, trend declines, basically she's rebalanced to a uh, lower stable rate. Now, very important here is that uh, because of the rate varies depending on the liquidity. So the more there is liquidity, the cheaper the liquidity is for Laura. And on the other hand, when there is less liquidity, there is more borrowers, it becomes more expensive. So now that she has the ability to control uh, whether she takes the variable and stable rate is actually very meaningful to her. And what we in finance usually call uh, is basically either uh, interest rate swaps or, or just basically uh, derivative uh, interest rates. So there's always a uh, kind of like a, a main market of interest rates and everything is built that, to that particular pricing of, of, of funds. And the very same uh, algorithms work in, in decentralized finance because we are pretty much just uh, building the very same finance, but we're just using uh, the blockchain technology uh, for the benefits. Uh, then one of the most interesting parts that we have is the developer side here. Uh, is there any developers here in general? Or OK, cool, nice, nice. So we have Alex, the developer, and Alex learns about Ethereum in a hackathon. So he met this guy, uh, we call him a Ethereum troll, Mark Zeller, and he basically shielded the other protocol. And uh, Alex wants to build a DeFi service that actually can interact with multiple other uh, DeFi projects, so, or, or protocols to be uh, more firm. So he wants to build something that actually uh, utilizes everything that there is uh, in the DeFi space. And because of the way that uh, smart, co smart contracts behave, uh, these different uh, protocols, they can actually interact with each other. Uh, more or less, uh, we could say that the whole uh, space is kind of like uh, interoperable because you could build a, a trading tool that uses different kinds of uh, liquidity pools and takes liquidity from, for example, uh, lending protocols. And now comes the interesting part. So uh, Alex reads the our protocol documentation and finds a feature called flash loans. And this flash loans allows him to borrow 100% under collateralized liquidity. And why it's very interesting is that uh, normally in, in DeFi, the, the, all the uh, lending protocols is more or less uh, over collateralized. So if you want to borrow, let's say, uh, 100 DAI, you usually over collateralize that loan with 200 DAI equivalent. 
So basically you put an asset such as Ethereum and, and, and as a collateral and borrow that DAI. And in this case, uh, you don't have that requirement. You have only one condition is that you return that uh, uh, loan within one Ethereum block. So basically uh, what that means is that you can build different kinds of products for uh, in, in, the, in the DeFi space that actually borrows that liquidity for that short period of time. And there is actually, uh, believe it or not, uh, interesting use cases for this particular uh, feature. And pretty much uh, the functionality uh, relies upon the way that uh, the, uh, the uh, Ethereum blockchain is, is built and, and how the uh, transactions work there. So when there's a, a Ethereum block, you can basically make different kinds of transactions. And once the block uh, passes, the, the uh, transactions needs to settle uh, one way or another. So basically, if, a, if Alex makes a transaction where uh, he borrows that liquidity and makes different kinds of trading or different kinds of transactions and doesn't return that liquidity back with a fee, that transaction fails because uh, uh, of course, because of the condition that you need to return it uh, back. And this is like a very, very interesting use case for uh, the flash loans. Uh, so here we have the uh, our protocol with a die pool. And we have a borrower here that actually has a uh, CDP open. So CDP is a, uh, it's called Walt these days, right? Okay, sorry guys. <laughs> So CDP or Vault, uh, uh, so basically uh, what, what is it? Actually it's over collateralization and, and, and basically uh, a note of, of the uh, DAI. So basically he opens a, a position to borrow DAI. And it happens so that the, uh, the value of the Ethereum has, uh, it has been went down and, and, and basically in, in that case he might uh, get a uh, uh, event called liquidation where the uh, collateral is taken and sold into the market. Now in this case what could be done is, is basically that the uh, borrower or the uh, for example Alex here can make a service that actually takes DAI for one, one Ethereum block from this uh, pool and sends that uh, borrowed DAI to the, uh, uh, to the vault and <laughs> liquidates the uh, uh, the, the loan and takes the ether, sends it to uh, Kyber, converts ether back to DAI, sends that DAI back to the uh, uh, Ave protocol, and, and Alex collects profit. So there's when there's a liquidation event in, in the, uh, the uh, uh, maker system, basically you have to pay a liquidation fee, and, and basically this is a way you can actually redu reduce the fee and, and save on that particular uh, liquidation event. So this is just an one uh, particular use case that you can actually apply uh, the, the, the flash loan liquidity. And other cases is basically arbitrage, for example, you can borrow from the, the very exact uh, uh, die pool, uh, open a trade in, in, for example, Uniswap and, and close a trade in, in, in uh, Kyber and return the funds back to the, uh, the protocol. So you can have those or you can refinance a loan. So let's say if there's a uh, CDP with, uh, what's the, uh, uh, the stability fee these days? 6%. 6%, 6 okay, so let's say stability fee is 6% uh, and there is a uh, better opportunity to some other, uh, in some other protocol, for example, that the borrower is paying 4%. So actually you can use the same mechanism to close the CDP and open a new loan in, in some other uh, lending protocol. And in that way you basically can algorithmically uh, save your, your uh, uh, lending, well, uh, borrowing costs. So they, these are pretty, pretty cool stuff that we are actually uh, utilizing. And for developers, it's just, a, just kind of like a small grasp that you can actually build. Uh, end of the day, there is there's, uh, more, more into it. So I, I think this is something that requires a bit of research. And, and I, I think there's uh, pretty uh, interest, interesting use cases uh, with, with the uh, flash loans. And this is kind of like a novel feature that we are deploying. So we're the uh, first uh, protocol that uh, is putting this on mainnet. So it's, it's pretty interesting to see how it's going to be uh, used. And why 
we call it a bit of like uh, DeFi or money markets in steroids is basically normal. Uh, and this, this is interesting aspect from traditional finance as well is that normally like what we have here is uh, in DeFi is that uh, you deposit uh, assets, for example, as a collateral and you borrow some funds when, you, when you're consuming. So the, the assets are kind of like sleeping in the, uh, the, the smart contracts. And being able to do flash loans, so be able to reuse those collaterals uh, for one block transactions, we actually are uh, getting more profit into the, uh, the, the pools uh, end of the day. And basically that should uh, provide more uh, profit also for the uh, uh, the depositors and uh, in one theory also kind of lower the rates for the borrowers but it really depends on how it will get utilized and what kind of like utilization rates there are so this is kind of like very interesting uh, uh, novelty that we are deploying now and the big picture is very very nice here so Alex who might be a developer in the basement of his mom uh, might have built a financial product uh, for his own like uh, development skills uh, without actually need to tie capital in. So he's borrowing that capital from the, uh, the, the protocol. And by building this particular product, he actually can add new, uh, he can actually open new possibilities to others to build on top of, of, of his service as well. So it's kind of like uh, money blocks, uh, what we call it in DeFi basically, different kinds of uh, uh, blocks. Which one? Legos. Money Legos could be a good, good, good word. And I, I think the key here is the composability. So let's say if, if someone built something and you can build something else and someone builds on top of you and, and there's like different layers. So uh, there might, I don't know what will be end of the, the layers, but there could be a lot of things eventually here. So it's kind of like, uh, empowering kind of this network effect with, with just by building as a community and, and everyone trying to figure something new. And there's same as, for example, with uh, how many different die variations there are now. Have you guys calculated? Uh, okay, now there's even a die, so at least <laughs> that's even one more. So there's like uh, different variations that people are trying to build up and that's like the very fascinating thing now that we're seeing. And one of the most uh, coolest thing is that uh, everyone will have right to govern these protocols because uh, of the um, way that we build. So we build open source technology and, and that's like the, the very kind of core. If you build open source, uh, others are able to participate. And basically everything this is possible in our protocol because of the Aave team that uh, we have been putting a lot of work and effort into this. And of course, the DeFi and Ava community. And that's basically you guys all here, so. Uh, yeah, and really want to highlight the open source aspect. There is, uh, it has been very get-go as well in Ethereum community that everything uh, kind of is in line with open source and we try to get people to contribute more and, and, and basically keep everything as open as possible. And which is not always easy when there is different, when it comes to financial products, because uh, end of the day, people are making, want to make money, but on the same hand, we also want to kind of uh, open up the finance uh, in a new way. And I really, really, really love this quote. So in real open source, you have the right to control your own <laughs> destiny. And this is Linux Torvalds from Linux. And what I really like in our job that we are doing is, is basically that we want to, you to have the right to control your destiny in finance on steroids, of course. So with the steroids part, I'm referring that uh, basically whoever builds anything, uh, whether it's Aave or whether it's someone else, uh, the idea is that you always build better or something new and, or something cool, you know? I mean, the, the fact is that uh, when we just evolve, things will go further. And of course, open source is a community, so it's not just a few people trying to build things, but uh, it's just like having a bigger uh, audience and everyone involved. And it just doesn't just mean developers and so forth. It's actually, oh yeah, it's Linus Torvalds again. 
So I mean, uh, yeah, it's just like getting more people involved and that's why we are also hiring. And if you are interested in DeFi, any shape or form, I recommend you to reach out to anyone in the space and try to uh, do something cool. And anyone who wants to uh, basically try the protocol that we have built, here is a uh, QR link. So you basically scan it. It takes you right away directly to the uh, main net. Uh, so, so, so you can access if you have a, a for example, a DAB browser and, uh, and, 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 or some sort of wallet that you can actually interact. For example, uh, MetaMask. Yeah. All right, uh, yeah, there's a link to our Discord, but <laughs> so it's av.com uh, slash Discord. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, maybe, there is, maybe there is one minute to spare to quickly show the, the uh, Can we do that at the end? Oh, yeah. Over time. yeah, okay, sorry guys. So, so you, you guys go to app.av.com and you, you, will, you can try yourself as well. But thank you, guys. Thank you.